We'll switch into a little different subject now this morning. If you live in Key West, you might know my next guest as the Hat Man, or maybe you know him as the Naked Guy. Whatever you know him as, he is a character, that's for sure. You can find him these days living in his 1999 Dodge van. Rod will share the rest of his story with us this morning. Thank you so much for being here with me today, Rod. Good morning, thank you. Rod, I mentioned to the viewers that they might know you as the Hat Man, or maybe they know you as Naked Guy. How did the Naked Guy nickname get started? I came down here for Fantasy Fest in 1995 for the first time. And I had a lady ask me, since I didn't look like I was tying in with the theme of things that year, what I was. And I responded, I said I was the overdressed nudist. And so ever since then, it's kind of been my handle, if you will, during Fantasy Fest. And that was when you first came to Key West, Rod, Fantasy Fest. Um, I was down here about a year and a half before that, but that was pretty basic on my first extended time down here. Yes. Did you live in your Dodge van right when you came to Key West? I was living in uh, Panama City Beach area. I had a, a travel trailer up there I was living in. But uh, when I got arrested for the nudity in year 2000, I came back down to go to trial, and I've been in my vehicle ever since. What is it like living in your 1999 Dodge van, Rob? If you're a homeless person, living in a vehicle is the best that you could be. I'm in and out of the weather, my belongings are safe, I don't have to worry about people stealing them, I don't have to worry about my safety at night. But it's not the greatest way to live. Rod, tell me about your life before you became homeless. My life was pretty much mainstream, middle America. When I was 18 to 19, I got married, became a father, bought a house, bought a new car, had my own asphalt repair company for a while. I was a carpet installer for 20 years, very ordinary. Mm -hmm. And then I came down here in 1995 for Fantasy Fest, loved it. Came down 96, 97, 98, 99, no problems. Year 2000, I get arrested. I came back down in my vehicle, expecting to go to trial, win, go back to Panama City Beach area, and carry on my life. I was convicted, and I felt like I needed to appeal the decision. It was wrong. And by doing that, I was forced to stay here. I got a job, and as they say, the rest is history. The rest is history. Now, Rod, you've had a couple of instances, though, with the law since you've been here in Key West. I have. <laughs> um, several DUI arrests. Um, totally been exonerated. One of them went to trial. Jury came back 22 minutes later, not guilty. Mm -hmm. um, I've been uh, charged with, you know, all kinds of stuff in the past that uh, it's, it's just nonsense. And that's part of what I'm going through right now in that in November, I go on trial for lodging in my vehicle. Mm -hmm. Because now it's becoming illegal to lodge in yes. your vehicle. The city commission passed a law about a year and a half ago it said that it's illegal for anyone to lodge in a vehicle. Mm -hmm. And the reasons for that, they claim, are that anyone who lodges in a vehicle is a hazard to the health and safety of everybody who lives here, everybody who visits here, and the environment. And furthermore, we all individually or collectively create a significant negative impact on tourism. Mm -hmm. That's and bonkers. Well, and this is totally new, isn't it? Because how many years, Rod, have you lived in your Dodge van? Uh, about 12 now. 12 years. Yeah. So this just came about in the past couple of months. Yes. What will happen, Rod, if you're not going to be able to live in your van anymore? That's not an option. I'm going to win. Mm -hmm. And you will be defending yourself in yes. this trial. Uh, we were in trial. We were in court mid-September, ready to pick the jury. At the last minute, the assistant city attorney says, oh, Wait a minute, we're not ready to go to trial after all. We have found incriminating statements this man has made and we need to have time to develop them and so on. So now trial is going to be set for mid-November. Rod, you've lived in your van, as you mentioned, for a number of years now. Why do you feel that you haven't been able to get out of the situation that, that you're in right now? Uh, it's economics. Um, I'm old enough now, I guess people don't want to hire me. Um, so my income is very minimal and it's not enough to afford even to rent a room in a place here so I wouldn't have enough money to eat on or do anything else. So it's simply e economics. 
But if it was up to you, if it weren't for that reason, you'd want something different. Oh, yes. In fact, I'm looking at buying a house somewhere else in Florida and leaving Key West and Monroe County. Mm -hmm. so. so you want the, your old life back? And to yeah, some degree, yes. I, you know, I'd like having electricity, like being able to have, watch television, many of the things that most people take for granted. Rod, I've had some other homeless people on the show in the past before, and I guess what I like to get out from them too is, what do you tell people here in the community or anywhere in our country when they see a homeless person? What do you think they, their view on the homeless should be? I think take an open heart and open mind about the situation. The word homeless can encounter a lot of different people and we're not all the same. I like to think that my hat is, my head is not just a hat rack, that um, I try to do the right thing by people. I don't panhandle, I don't break into people's houses and steal things from people. I don't create any kind of a disturbance in the neighborhoods, but Key West still considers me to be a criminal. Mm -hmm. So besides wearing some funky hats and, and sometimes <laughs> going around without the right amount of clothing on, you, you feel that you don't really cause any trouble? No. In fact, I was at a restaurant bar a couple of weeks ago. I got ready to leave. I had this very same hat on. Mm -hmm. And this lady stopped me and said, oh, can I take a picture of you? Well, certainly, okay. And then I said that I had just been to Guatemala and I bought the fabric down there and made the hat. She said, Guatemala, oh, I live in Guatemala. I was born down there. We had this great conversation. The bartender looks at my buddy that was there and said, see, there he is being a significant negative impact on tourism again. <laughs> it's all bonkers. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, this is just something that, you know, people had seen. My interaction with a total stranger I'm not a threat to anybody. Mm -hmm. You seem to just be minding your business, Rod. That's what I try to do. Mm -hmm. Now, I keep calling you Rod, but that's actually not your first name. No. Tell our viewers this morning about your real name. My first name is Shadaroba, S-H-A-H-D-A-R-O-B-A. It's the title to a 1961, maybe 1962 Roy Orbison song by that title. In the, ti in the song, he mentions the meaning of the word, which is, the future is much better than the past. The future is much better than the past. Rod, do you think that that applies to your life, that your future can be much better than your past? Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. what, would, what would be your, your goal for the future, 10 years, 15 years from now, Rod? Be alive, happy. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm 67, so I realize I don't have you know, 20 or 30, 40 more years, okay? Um, just like to live in peace and, and tranquility and, and enjoy life and uh, not be harassed by the cops. And bring a smile to people's faces sure. by wearing some fun hats, <laughs> right, Rod? Sure. <laughs> I should show you this. It switches. <laughs> well, how great is that? <laughs> Created specifically by you, too. Yes. All right. Well, Rod, maybe next time that you see me, you can bring me one of your created hats. I no would problem. like that. <laughs> Thank you very much for being on this morning. It's been a pleasure talking oh, with you. you. I'm going to take a quick break right now. There's more to come this morning. Stay with me.